Welcome to Save Your Sanity. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler. In this episode, we're going to be talking about handling the horrors of hijackal in-laws. <clears throat> this is a topic that I was especially asked for by a couple of listeners, so I certainly hope that this begins to fit the bill for what you wanted to know. I am calling this one kind of part one, not formally, but we need to know that there's a lot to know about handling hijackal in-laws. So <clears throat> I may very well in a month or two do a second part on this because it just was so much to talk about. There are basically seven horrors that I have spoken about before when I've been interviewed or when I've been talking about this. And you may recognize them, so I'll just read them to you. They are controlling, critical, cruel, competitive, demanding, domineering, and divisive. Do you have a hijackal in-law in mind? Listen to that list again and see how they fit. They are controlling, critical, cruel, competitive, demanding, domineering, and divisive. So you can see what a huge a number of things that you have to deal with if you have found yourself with a hijackal in-law. Now that may be <clears throat> that you married into a family where the mother, father, sister, brother-in-law are hijackals. It may be that you um, have an adult child who marries and you get some of those in-laws or these spouse or partner of that adult child is a hijackal. I have handled conversations with so many people who were just so devastated and hurt by their child choosing to marry a person they had no idea was a hijackal. And then the ongoing and ever deepening and ever more divisive things that are taken away from them because they have a hijackal in-law. If you have one, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I help, hope by refining and specifying, it will help you recognize some of the more subtle aspects of this in this episode. <clears throat> and you know, when you, when you get a partner, you get a bonus called the in-laws. And it's a bit of a lottery. And if you have found that you lost the lottery by getting hijackal in-laws, then you have a big mountain in front of you that you either have to go around and ignore or you have to find a way to live with or in a few cases, climb over. So whether you married somebody or someone married into your family, you may find yourself dealing with and handling the horrors of hijackal in-laws. And an in-law is just any relative by marriage. So it could be extensive. It could be anywhere in the whole family. And in-laws can be wonderful and welcoming and supportive. And when that happens, you win the lottery. Um, but then there's the hijackal kind. And that is a whole other matter. So <clears throat> when you first meet people, whether they're, they're in-laws or about to be in-laws, there's usually some kind of honeymoon phase, isn't there? Where everybody's making nice and pretending to approve, maybe saying things behind someone's back, but not saying it to their face. And it's similar to the love bombing phase in a primary romantic relationship or in any relationship because hijackals will love bomb anybody when they want something. So you may have mistaken this and thought, oh, I've won the lottery. I have the very best in-laws ever. And then find out, no. Now, when I did the episode on circular conversations a couple of months ago, I talked about living with a hijackal is like living in a blender. Well, this is kind of the same thing if you go back to that old movie um, <clears throat> because the, the whole idea of gremlins <laughs> is they looked benign 
and could be very cute and sweet when they wanted to be, but then they could be horrible in the background or when they didn't want to be. And here we have the same thing when you introduce in-laws into the mix because we don't know which direction they're going to go. And so sometimes they love bomb you. Sometimes there's a honeymoon phase. Sometimes they just start with their claws out and the dismissive, denying, nasty kind of things going on. And sometimes the hijackal in-laws appear benign and then all of a sudden they become competitive. And it may be subtle at first, but it's stronger and stronger. What do you do with them? Sometimes they they demonstrate their need for power over right away, and some of them play a victim. And so they're not, not really um, showing their true stripes, if you like. And so you ease into a relationship with in-laws, and then eventually, sometimes it becomes very diseased, and you need to know what to do about that. So we take the whole family into the mix, not just the hijackal in-law, but the flying monkeys of the hijackal, the triangulation within the family, so many possible relationships in there, and how they could be running. And you get that horrors of hijackal in-laws. And there are many, truly many. And triangulation at its worst occurs there because people are setting people up by telling stories about them behind their back and they're creating alliances and oh, all kinds of nasty stuff. And that's what I do. I help people with these things. So I have heard a lot of stories and hopefully I've been able to offer uh, a lot of insights too, which I hope to be offering to you in this episode. So when, when we're thinking about this, what's worse than the first time the in-law drives their stake in the ground and through their heart simultaneously, you know, there is that moment when finally you get it, that the in-law has driven their planted their flag in their ground and said, no. And at the same time, it drives a stake through your heart that I can no longer pretend that this is a healthy relationship. I can no longer pretend that I am being accepted or we are being seen as accepting. And that creates another whole difficulty because it shatters our future hopes. It shattered our dream of how this was going to be and how this enlarging the family was going to be such a good thing and how wonderful it would be as the family grew. So <clears throat> have you ever had the idea that, well, you could just change yourself for an, an hijackal in-law? You could move in their direction a little bit. You could give up something that they didn't like. You could meet their expectations. You could let go of something. That's what healthy people do. But if you find yourself with a hijackal, every time you give up something, you give in, you move, they are delighted because they just see it as, ah, oh, I have a little more power. I have a little more power. Let me push a little more. Let me push a little more. Let me see how far I can push this. And it's not good. <clears throat> but if you start that way, hoping that they're going to see that you're trying, that you want to, that you want to meet them in the middle. You know, there was a wonderful quote that I read that said, most people who want to compromise think they're already standing on the 50-yard line. <clears throat> That's the way it is with a hijack. And so this is important because if you give up parts of yourself in order to please a hijackal, and in, in any realm, in-law, partner, parent, sibling, adult, child, it is not a good idea and it won't work. It won't make it, the relationship any better. Giving up parts of yourself does not work. 
giving up your stand, giving up your values, giving in, all it does is have you abandon yourself in favor of keeping someone else happy. And that's not your job, not your job. So <clears throat> the first place to start is to say, all right, if you have a partner, which is where you got these in-laws from, so I assume you have a partner, that are you and your partner on the same page about this? Because that's primary. Does your partner see the manipulations? Does your partner see the games? Does your partner make excuses for the games and manipulations? Does your partner actually have boundaries and you can share them? So the first thing is to find out where does my partner stand in relation to the hijackal in-law? If it's their parent, they are in a bind, in a total bind, and the parent assumes that they, their child will align with the parent and you will be left in the cold unless you find a way to say, no, we are a bonded pair now. You and I are a bonded pair. Our allegiance is to each other. We make decisions for us. And so it becomes very primary to, to realize, you know, what is this up with your partner? Can you align? Can you have discussions without them becoming defensive? Can you have discussions about it with them not feeling that they are being put upon? Because you are going to test the emotional maturity of your relationship with your partner when you have that conversation. And that's important, very, very important to see. Did your partner warn you about this? Did they allude to it? Or did they outrightly just tell you? Well, if they did tell you, that's great because they already have an insight that <clears throat> this is important, right? And <clears throat> that they want you to be forewarned. They want you to understand that, that there are difficulties down the road. And so it's important to know, will it work? Will it work if you give in to these people? No, because every time you give in to a hijackal, they move the marker. They want something different. That you gave them what they wanted, now they want something else. So the same thing is true when you're dealing with the in-laws. The same thing will happen. So <clears throat> then you look at the in-laws. What is their communication style? Are they direct? Do they just say what they mean? in a direct way without any damaging um, language? Or are they passive aggressive? Do they beat around the bush? Are they indirect? Do they nuance and inference and you're supposed to get it, right? Or are they blaming? Are they shaming? Or do they fall into the category of Susan Forward's fog? Are they instigators of fear? obligation and guilt. You need to stand back and have a look at these hijackal in-laws and see what's their way of being in the world? What are they really up to? You know, when you're really in it because you're feeling hurt or you're feeling afraid or all those things, this is the time to step back and have a different look at it. <clears throat> Just come from a different space. And if you and your partner are not a team, and present a united front, it's going to be a dangerous path for you. You may feel very alone. And these are realities of being in these relationships. If your partner cannot or will not be boundaried with these relatives, because they don't want to hurt them, they don't want the upset, they don't want to deal with the fallout, whatever their reasons are. Know already that your first task is to find out how much are you willing to put into this relationship. It's absolutely key. <clears throat> so let's just look at a few of those in-law relationships. How about the hijackal mother-in-law? 
I've made lots of notes here, so I'm going to refer to them so that we can just have some clarity about what's probably going on. A hijackal mother-in-law thinks they own their child. They own their child and the child must be loyal to them. And so <clears throat> they want their child to become a flying monkey for them. So the hijackal mother is going to be the one who sides with the child. And this will be particularly obvious because you either make her look good or you're useless. <laughs> you will soon understand that that is the dynamic. That is the expectation. You come over to my side, you make me look good, or you're useless, and I'm going to tell the world that you're useless. And the hijackal father-in-law, he feels no one is good enough for his child. And <clears throat> he feels certain that no one is good enough for him or as good as him. So he is going to be very, very judgmental. And he will try to seduce you into agreeing with his points of view. He will try and have power over you and tell you what to do and how to do it and why you should be on his side. Now, the hijackal sister-in-law, if you are female, is going to offer you competition disguised in the beginning as being a confidant. And if you are male, they're not going to have the competition, but they're going to disguise themselves as your confidant. And the hijackal sister-in-law will triangulate through their husband and the parents. So you can see how the triangles begin to form, and there'll be many, many, many of them. Now, the hijackal brother-in-law wants all the attention for himself. <clears throat> and his stance is, you will never be good enough to be part of this family. I'm already in, and you are redundant. <laughs> so <clears throat> you will feel those vibes. Then the hijackal daughter-in-law, they will be demanding. They may withhold their partner or their family from you. They may withhold grandchildren. And they will do their best to make their husband choose them over anybody else in the family. And the hijackal son-in-law is competing for control. So you will see that competition run rampant. And they will withhold the children, as will the hijackal sister-in-law, and they will dismiss you if you are the older person as not important. You've had your time. We're going to do it our way. And it's up to us, which it is, of course, but it comes with all of this dismissive behavior from a hijackal. And Hijackals are the kings and queens of being dismissive, you know, sort of off with their heads uh, kind of behavior. I, I rule the roost and what I say goes and what I want is the only thing that's important. So when we start to get into the realm of hijackal in-laws, this shows up again. So it's important for us. Now, um, one blanket thing about dealing with hijackal in-laws is everything is a transaction. Just when you think something lovely is being offered to you, you find it has strings attached. Everything is a transaction. And the hijackal, no matter of which stripe of in-law they are, is focused on winning. Every hijackal is focused on winning. They must win in the moment, in this conversation, on this day, on this topic. That is what they're focused on. So don't be surprised when they want you to be losing. And everything is a bargaining chip. Everything. <clears throat> be really careful when you have hijackal in-laws. You want those intimate moments. You want the times when you feel you're accepted. And a hijackal is very deceptive about that. They want inside information from you. So they will pretend that they are liking you today. 
because they want some insider information. They want to know your vulnerabilities. They want to know how much control they have over you. So be very careful about that because everything with them is a bargaining chip and they're always on the lookout for more bargaining chips, more ways to manipulate you. So be careful when they endeavor to seduce you into, we're friends, right? All, what you've been longing for, that breaking of the barrier and you're on the inside of the team, that's not what's going on with a hijackal. They are simply giving the illusion of inclusion so that they can get insider information to use against you later. And that's a difficult one to swallow because you're just so relieved that they want to talk to you and they're being nice to you. And they even seem to be soliciting your opinion. And then a week or two or a month or two down the road, you find out that they were just information gathering to hurt you. So be very, very careful with that. Now, <clears throat> I have written out a list of 10 things that <clears throat> will help you handle hijackals. And I'm not going to go into in depth in any of them. But as I said, I will talk about this at another time. And I did do a, a video interview where I was interviewed by Tracy Malone at Narcissist Abuse Support. And I invite you to go over and watch that video. Um, you'll find it on YouTube. It's over there. And you just put in Shaler Malone in-laws and you'll find it. And uh, that may be very helpful to you if you're looking for deeper skills and insights than I am offering you in this episode because there are so many skills and insights and strategies and tactics that you need to know. But that interview is there for you. And if you want to talk to me personally, um, you can and you haven't before, you can use your one-time new client offer of a full hour with me for only $97. And you will find that at beaclient.com. Beaclient.com. So lots of help for you there. So let's talk about these 10 ways to handle a hijackal, you, a hijackal in-law. And you may not use all 10, but you may find that some of these you hadn't thought of and you can work them through. So the first one relates to something I said earlier, which is where is your level of agreement with your partner? Because these in-laws have to be dealt with it from a team approach. And you need to know if you are on a team, if you and your partner are a team that you can count on and trust. And you need to really wrestle that one to the ground. You don't want any you know, kind of promises that are not going to be kept. You really need to be clear and firm about that. Number two is that you and your partner and you personally are best to have well-expressed boundaries with that are non-negotiable and have consequences. You know, you don't have to spill the consequences the first time you put the boundary out there. You know, I, I will to happily be part of a conversation in which there is no name calling or putting each other down. If that's not the case, I will not be happy. Very clear boundary. If it is not respected, you add a consequence. What will you do? Now, I've done several episodes on boundaries, so you can go and see that. But really important and most often overlooked because it's really difficult is to express boundaries that are non-negotiable and then add the consequences of trespassing those boundaries and do it as a united front with your partner. This gives a clear message to any hijackal in-law that we're a team and we're handling this together and our decision is this. So a very powerful us strategy. Number three is stop living up to the expectations of others. I talked about that in a podcast just a couple of weeks ago. That you can be very addicted to drama 
if you are super concerned about living up to the expectations of others. And when you live up to the expectations of a hijackal, you lose yourself. You can totally lose yourself. And when you're, you're once removed by in-laws, please take this to heart. Stop living up to the expectations of other people, in particular, hijackal in-laws. So important. Number four is you need to make a decision about loyalty to your own and your couple values. And if other people don't share your values or don't demonstrate that they share their values, then you as a couple can remove yourselves, step away, pull back. Yeah, it's not what you wanted. It's not what you planned. But it may well be what you have to do, the wise thing to do. And then number five is to present that united front always. You know, we have agreed, we decided, we think this. For our family, we will do this. And when you are very clear, people tend to back off. They'll try really hard because you present a challenge. So they will want to overcome that challenge, wear you down, tear you down, put you down for a bit. But when you can continue with that solid front of we, the solid front of us, our family, they get the message sometimes. I mean, not all of them are, are have any interest in getting the message because the message is not in their best interest, according to them. But you do well when you and your partner make that unified front. And number six is know when to hold and know when to fold. You need to know and step back from the interactions, the family dynamic enough to say, okay, at this moment will be the time, will be our walk away. Up until then, we will present our united front. We will be pleasant. We will live by our values. At this moment, when this goes down, when these people say this, when that happens, we will leave. We will walk away. We will vote with our feet. And that's a big decision. Number seven is refuse to play when they invite you out to play. And I don't mean that when they want to take you out for a lovely dinner. I mean when they say, well, come on, let's talk about this. Let's Let's figure this out. Let's clarify this. Why is it that you are being so difficult? When they invite you out to play, mm -mm. no, 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 no. We're, we have been clear about our values. We have been clear about our boundaries. There is no need for further discussion. When you can convince them, and they're hard to convince, when you can convince them that you are clear and unmovable, as a person, as a pair, they lose interest. They will try harder and harder and harder, and then they will lose interest. And yes, then they'll go and talk about you behind your back. They'll make up stories. They'll warp stories. They'll change things. They'll say nasty things. But that's them, not you. Be very, very clear about that. Number eight is use the personal weather report. Learn to say things using the personal weather report. It will keep you the safest, the clearest, and the most affirming. And if you're not familiar with my technique, the personal weather report, you'll find a couple chapters on it in Kaizen for Couples, which is available on Amazon as an ebook, a print book, or an audio book. I also put together some videos and information and made a website where you can go and learn about it. Go to personalweatherreport.com. That's pretty simple, right? Personalweatherreport.com. Become a master of the personal weather report. It will help you so much in every relationship that you have. And it will help you feel solid within yourself and feel confident because you're never ever speaking of other people, you're speaking about yourself. 
and you are an expert on what you think, feel, need, want, prefer, and remember. And that personal weather report will help you say that. You know, and if you find that you need or want more support and you'd like to do it in a group setting, join my Emerging Empowered Community. Just go to joinintoday.com. Joinintoday.com and join there. Members get so many, so many resources. And also they get three times a month in a group to ask their questions of me. And some people find that very valuable. And if you think you would, go to joinintoday.com. So important. So we've got eight ways to handle hijackle in-laws. Now, number nine is big. Know your price. If you can't be bought over to the dark side, know when to stop. I said earlier in uh, number six, know when to hold and know when to fold. But know your price. If, if they are offering you something that's very enticing and you know just how long the strings attached to it are, know your price. Don't be bought by them. Don't be bought off by them. If it is priceless to you to live in integrity with your values, your vision, your beliefs, and your goals, then your price is zero. But know that. Have thought it through. You know, yes, they will offer you things that they know that you want. Know your price. And the last one is see the lay of loyalty land in the family situation. You know, have a good look to see where the loyalty lands in within all of the different parts of the family. Step back again. See how that is. See where you'd like to fit. See where you can fit. See where it is a fit for you without ever giving up your values or your vision. So important because hijackal in-laws can be all-consuming. You can be spending all your time trying to make someone happy who is dedicated to never allowing you to make them happy. They will always be moving the markers because they always want control over you. And it's so important to see that. So I hope this has been helpful. And as I said, in a couple of months or whenever... I, it strikes me to do it. I will do another one so that we can continue that conversation. If there are things that you would like me to include, put it in, in the comments under the video. Or if you're listening on the podcast, you can send me an email at rs at emergingempowered.com. My initials, rs at emergingempowered.com. So until we meet again, Take very good care of yourself because you're precious and you matter. Talk soon.